At the end of Back to the Future Part 2, Doc was struck by lightning and accidentally sent back to the Wild West in 1885. And what's the first thing he built? A gigantic mechanical refrigerator. It's a refrigerator. Because priorities. The man really loved his iced tea. Iced tea? While watching this movie since I was a kid, I always wondered if you could actually build that fridge without electricity or Freon or any modern parts. Like, could you MacGyver your way to an ice cube in 1885? The late 1800s were very exciting, not just because all the train robbing, bootlegging, and mustaches that could legally vote, but science was on the verge of greatness. They were just discovering a lot of important technology that we now use daily like radio, combustion engines, and light bulbs. But was all the technology really there for Doc to make some kind of primitive steam-powered refrigerator ice machine 140 years ago? Let's quickly sketch out a wacky cartoon Dr. Emmett Brown to work with here. Okay, he almost could have used electricity at this time, but not quite. Thomas Edison's DC power plants existed, but were still very rare, small, and expensive. And Nikola Tesla's AC induction motor was still two years away. Okay, so unelectric it is. Now the way to cool anything down is by removing heat from it, not adding cold. Today we do that with things like isobutane and electricity, neither of which really existed yet in 1885. So first off, Doc needs a liquid with a low boiling point. Why? Because phase changes. Temperature exchange happens when something goes from gas to liquid or vice versa. Freon was kind of the precursor to isobutane, which we recently stopped using because it made the ozone sad. But even Freon was useless to Doc since it wasn't discovered until 1928. We need something else that was around in 1885 that can absorb and transfer heat effectively. And it just so happens that ammonia was around back then, which is an excellent refrigerant. It's also toxic to humans if handled improperly, which is why we don't use it today. But Doc's a pro and knows what he's doing, so we're good. Hey, it's all good. Don't worry about it. Grandpa's good. Now, how's he gonna get this ammonia to freeze water and make ice cubes? The key is to get it in the form of a cold, low-pressure liquid so we can get those phase changes happening. But ammonia boils, aka turns into a gas, at negative 28 degrees Fahrenheit, so this is where it gets a little tricky. The process is gonna have to start with a compressor. This'll turn the ammonia into a hot, high-pressure gas, which is the opposite of what we want. Anyway, next we'll have it flow through some condenser coils on the outside of the fridge, cooling the ammonia down, condensing it into a high pressure liquid, and releasing heat from that phase transition into the surrounding room. Remember the goal is a cold, low pressure liquid, so we're getting closer. Next, it'll go through an expansion valve or throttle, causing a sudden drop in pressure which will lower the boiling point of the refrigerant, causing it to partially evaporate and enter a colder, low pressure, mostly liquid state. This is where we want it, because now it can flow through more pipes on the inside of the fridge called evaporator coils. Simply running cold liquid through these coils inside your fridge isn't going to make the fridge much colder though. That would basically be trying to add cold like I mentioned earlier, which wouldn't do much. The real magic happens because of the phase change of the ammonia. The hotter air inside the fridge causes it to fully evaporate. And yes, the 35 degree temperature of the fridge seems very hot compared to the negative 28 degree boiling point of ammonia. So the phase change of the ammonia boiling into a gas requires energy, which it steals from the surrounding air inside the fridge. So the fridge gets colder, the ammonia gets gassier, and everyone wins. The gas is then sent back to the compressor where the cycle repeats. So for Doc to do all this, he needs copper pipe, which definitely did already exist in 1885. Go find me some copper pipe, Marty. We've already talked about the ammonia he can use for the refrigerant. People had been using it for various purposes for a while already, and even its elemental composition had been known for a hundred years since 1785. Compressors have been around for centuries in one primitive form or another, but the first compound air compressor that compressed air in successive cylinders like what Doc's looking for was invented in 1829, so Doc's good there too. The throttle can be made with just a brass nozzle, valve, needle, and spring. And steam power, which Doc appears to have used, was very well developed by 1885. So Doc did indeed have everything he needed to make a mechanical refrigerator. It would have been very bulky, inefficient, and sounded like a locomotive having an existential crisis. And this is exactly how it's portrayed in the film. I can never take that risk! 
In fact, during my research into this topic, I found that creating a closed cycle vapor compression refrigerator was not only possible with 1885 technology, but the first one had already been invented way back in 1834, and refrigerators were in use all over commercially for industries like meat packing, breweries, and ice plants. So Doc wasn't exactly ahead of his time here, he was just really into iced tea. 